Hello, and thank you for watching another video, I guess, from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service here in Central Washington. And as you can see here, I have a board on the table. Uh, it's set up in kind of a different way than usual. You can kind of see on the other camera here that I'm hooked up to an external power supply to drive the output section of a standard, what I call an SNI design. Uh, these SNI designs use the MIC4452 drivers uh, coming off of an IRS2184 card. This is a Crescendo 17K, so it has two cards. Uh, it'd be nice to have, like on a normal SNI, a, a, a high-low set of drivers for each card, but that's not how they have this done. You just have one high, one low, and one high, one low for each half of the amplifier. Actually, this is in quarters. Um, but uh, the difference between the Crescendo 17K or any other SNI board that uses one or two output cards is how do you get this thing to fire up without running your 100 plus volts of rail voltage? and still be able to see the switching of the output section before you slide all this back together and have catastrophic failures if you missed something, which I have done. I have missed um, some solder bridges on the bottom of these boards where I'd put it all back together, fire up the amp and bam, you lose an output transistor. And then when that happens, you gotta go back through, replace the transistors, the Zener diodes, the drivers, it just becomes a huge um, headache. And of course, you know, it doesn't make financial sense to fire something up if you don't know that it works correctly, especially at high voltages. So this is why I use this power supply kind of off to the side here, kind of hard to see, sorry about that. I can't fit this all under the one main camera here, um, but this makes 68 volts, I do believe, uh, 58 volts. This produces 58 volts, uh, positive negative rail. I have a lead. Uh, you can't see it because my picture's covering up, but I have a lead here for my AC input for the plus minus 12 volts for the preamp. And then I have my input here that references the... Uh, additional 12 volt regulators references it to negative rail uh, so this goes over and feeds the drive i like to say the drive for the output section and you can just see off camera here i have it clipped with a little heat sink let me see here yeah with a little heat sink here to keep them from getting too hot because those regulators do get hot and this is why i like to test these boards uh, before hooking them up to, you know, the actual rail voltage, is there's many different components of these boards that can uh, that can fail on you, uh, depending on how thorough you are on your uh, rebuilds. So the way to fire these up. If, as I mentioned, you got to have your appropriate voltages here and your reference to voltages. That's just to power up uh, the system in general. Then you have to find a way to check the switching signal. And most of these SNI boards have muting transistors. Uh, so this particular design uses the J111 muting transistor, which is again typical for a lot of SNI boards you're going to find your primary muting transistor right over here on most of your SNI boards just off to the side of your drive card in front of your auxiliary um, voltage reference to negative rail so right over here in this area let me see if I can get you. I don't know if I can zoom you in here very far without getting too far off of. Let's see what I can do here for you guys. So 
So the muting transistor for this card is located right here. And as you can see, I have it removed. You will not get the output section to start the switching without removing the muting transistors. And now just to point it out, we're gonna have another muting transistor, a second muting transistor, which other SNI boards don't have, right over here off to the side of the other drive card. Right here is another J111 muting transistor that you'll have to remove to get this side of the amplifier. Let me see if I can get this back into one picture here. Okay, uh, so right now I have this one removed. So this side here, you'll see a switching signal on the scope, which is normally right here for you guys, but I don't have it fired up because I fire that up, the other videos are going to start to have a little bit of a glitch to it. And this side over here won't start switching. This side here, because the muting transistor is installed still, which I have already verified on the scope right over here on the bench. This side, I do have a switching signal. This side, I don't because I have the muting transistor installed. Uh, I have the Hakko the FR301 warming up here for us today. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me clear this pin out real quick here. And we're just gonna flip this board over and we're going to remove the other muting transistor once I locate it here. Right here. And you can usually tell that someone's already removed it. Uh, there has been, I don't know if it's extensive work done on this. But there has been some work done. If this is not a prototype board. There's some really... Really odd, um, odd work has been done to this. As you can see here, uh, you can't quite see here because of the glare of my lights. Uh, right there we go. I mean, this is not normal. This trace has been cut and removed and jumpered over to this bus bar here. Uh, to this wire and this wire has been soldered over to here. So this is not a normal board. Let me get this thing flipped back over again. Get this transistor out of here. Oh, which has been heavily soldered into place. That is not very nice. Give me two seconds here, guys, to remove what somebody has so politely over soldered. Where was I? Right here. There we go. There it is. All right. So that is going to be the Yep. J1 11 muting transistor. So now both sides are going to start to switch for me. And I'm just going to verify that real quick on the scope. I don't have an input signal right now because my primary goal is to make sure that my output drive does have the uh, that does have switching. I just got to find everything here. Get my probe out. And so it was this side here that I did not have released from the muting circuit. Um, I have the regulators heat sink on. These do get quite warm, even at 58 volts. These don't heat up as bad for the preamp. So it should be good to go. And... There's the switching. That's exactly what I wanted to see. 
And what I do is I check all four corners. I call them all four corners. So you're going to have a high side, low side, high side, low side, high side, low side, etc. Uh, so I just checked this side here, and this side had switching. And so does this side. And I'm going to check it one more time. You got to check these pretty quick because the uh, 2184 shuts down relatively quick when it does not have uh, everything it needs to run. So right now it has no feedback. But I do see switching there. So I'm going to take my input. Excuse the big head in, any, in front of any cameras. 50 hertz signal at 1.5 volts. Now, with an input signal, I'm going to hear the inductors clicking away. Because again, this is not a full setup, so it's not going to want to actually run, well, very decently. And what I do is I check this out, the inductors. And there it is. So you'll see, uh, you'll see on the scope, you're going to see your switching, but it's going to be incremental. So that was this inductor. I want to make sure things aren't getting too hot here. Again, guys, keep your fingers out of the rails. Even if you're at 60 volts, this, this still can give a pretty good pop. Uh, so that was one inductor. And I'm going to move over to the other inductor. And yep, as long as I see that I have that random switching. And this inductor. Perfect. Exactly what I'm looking for. And then last but not least, let's make sure my regulators aren't overheating. Nope. Number four, perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So that was before the inductor. So I can actually go over to the output of the inductor and see kind of a, probably a half sine wave. Yep, half sine wave, there it is, perfect. So just by running those tests, um, input signal, Muting transistors out. Uh, of course, everything's rebuilt. And as long as I'm showing that I have switching on all four inductors, that tells me that I'm I'm good to go to slide this back into the heat sink. Um, of course, you know, doing all my uh, maintenance items, po points of doing all my maintenance items like uh, thermal paste, gap pad. Um, all of that gets replaced, slide it back together. I would have no concerns at all, really, about this not firing up properly. Uh, don't get me wrong, there are times where I've had insulators, you know, I got to, I missed on the insulator, it shorts to the case. I mean, there are a few instances like that where the amplifier itself will fail. But most cases, if you have an issue, you're going to see it either A, not switching, or B, getting really extremely hot. And just to stay on top of that, uh, the, the last thing I haven't checked is to make sure I don't overheat on anything. So this is just an old school TG167 infrared camera here, or imager. I don't know if this is a camera. I mean, I can take pictures, so I guess it's a camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check the transistors, of course, they're all stone cold voltage regulators. I already did verify I have my plus minus 12 volts there. Uh, the negative rail referenced voltage regulators are just slightly warm as expected. I do have a big block of aluminum behind those. I'm just going to get a reference of the output transistors and then i'm going to go ahead and hold the signal here for a minute with my scope in place so i can see what's going on be nice if i can clip on to an output to watch my sine wave be 
maybe if I can get on to that. It says Yeah. Uh, I can really can't clip my probe on the output of an inductor. They're kind of hard to get to. But I know that it's switching, so I'm just going to go ahead and go on the drain of the high side. One, two, three, one, two, three. As soon as I find what I'm looking for here. There it is. All right. The drain of the high side. Let me go around and make sure that I don't have any abnormal heat on the transistors. A little bit of heat coming off of the plus minus 12 volt regulators, but nothing abnormal. So I'm just going to go ahead and fire this up. Double check it, making sure nothing's overheating. And nothing. The output transistors are what we call stone cold. So no concerns. Um, if you had a bad drive uh, in the signal, you would show heat in the output transistors. So that's that's it. That's pretty much what I do on these uh, big SNI Korean boards. I uh, uh, just to save on overhead costs of failures. I always power the board externally to test this before going full rail voltage and uh nine times even even better than that i mean more it's better than nine times out of ten that this is a flawless procedure for me um from here what i do is i verify that the power supply is okay that it uh, then i'll log what it produces uh, at the rail voltage uh, at a given input so you'll have like a one to nine turn ratio or a one to 11. I've seen as high as one to 13 um, on the power supplies. <clears throat> hint, hint, DC 10K, super high winds. Um, but uh, yeah, I verify the power supply, slap all this back together, put it on the load bench, test it up, send it back out. Uh, but that's what I do for these guys is, is it's really, really straightforward. Replace the transistors, Replace the Zener diodes, replace the drivers. Not very often I have to replace a card. Uh, if I had a hard hit on a driver, I would replace the IRS 2184IC that's on that card. Um, but otherwise, it's, they're really just simple standard rebuilds. But uh, if you guys have any questions, please... Uh, leave them down below for me i i love to help where i can and when i can and uh ellensburgamplifier.com is my website or ellensburg amplifier slash request slash a slash quote to get a hold of me for any of your equip equipment repairs um but yeah if you have any questions leave them down below guys and and again please uh, i can't stress this more to please stay safe these are absolutely high voltage amplifiers that will uh, have the potential to give you a very serious bad day, um, especially on amps like the DC-10K that's got extraordinarily high windings on the power supply. This one isn't bad. I think there's like 108 volts at 12 volts. Um, I can't remember. I don't know for sure, but of course I'm going to double check that. Yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, leave them comments down below for me, and we will catch you on the next video. Stay safe, guys.